Justin, how you doing? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Good to have you. Good to have you. Yeah, you bet. Okay, uh, moving on. Rivalry game's over. Time to move on to uh, next opponent, uh, Northern Illinois, a team that gave us fits last year. It was uh, we were lucky to escape there with a win. Uh, very close game, physical game, and uh, like I said, we were fortunate to to come away with the victory. Uh, got them in our place this year, um, changing coaching staff uh, for them. Um, so uh, you know, we have one game uh, to draw upon. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, we had to do some digging for you know from places that the coordinators have been and so forth. So, so still some unknowns in this game, but uh, at least we got a game, uh, one game to to reference and and uh, study, and uh, so. That's uh, that's a positive. We got uh, extra day to prepare, a couple extra days. Um, brought the players in Friday, watched the game, uh, graded it, uh, got some things done, gave them the weekend off, and now we're back at it today. Um, so we'll go, uh, you know, pads today and tomorrow. Take the pads off on Wednesday and get them fresh for the game on Saturday. So, questions. Hi, hey, Kyle. You, you said a lot of positive things about morning games at the Pac-12 Media Day. Uh -huh. Um, you've got a morning game. I think you guys are 8-2 and two in the Pac-12 since you in morning games. Tell me what you like about morning games and are you excited to have one? Well, number one, not having to sit around all day. That's the, that's the biggest uh, advantage is, is you get to, you know, you wake up and shoot a little pregame meal at uh, about 7.45. And so it's you wake up and you get going and, and uh, you don't have to sit around for hours on end waiting for kickoff. So that's the, that's the biggest positive. One, one thing that stands out about the uh, offense in week one is you were one of 22 teams in the country that didn't turn the ball over, one of 28 that didn't allow a sack. Um, what, what's meaningful about the way the offense started in week one? Well, taking care of the football is job one offensively, so that's great, uh, a great accomplishment to, to be able to do that and uh, not give up a sack as well. Now, we didn't throw a whole lot, and a lot of the throws were off action passes, and. Uh, typically, you buy yourself a little more time on action pass, but but uh, that's you know we went into the game. We talked about playing clean uh, with uh, not only from the penalty standpoint, but from taking care of the football and and uh, keeping the pocket clean. And so I think that's uh, you know exactly what we were after uh, in that regard. You know we would have been, liked to have been a little more prolific throwing the football, but but that'll come. And so we're not not overly concerned about that, but. But uh, those things you pointed out were very important to us and, and something that we were uh, stressing going into the game. Coach, speaking of the passing game, um, you mentioned after the game there was a lot of times because they were dropping eight guys back and Tyler was just kind of taking what was there. Right. Uh, do you expect that to maybe open up a little bit more if people start to stack the box to try to stop Zach a little bit more? Yeah, and it goes hand in hand. That's, that's why a strong run game will open up your, your throw game because exactly that. they got to put the extra hats in the box to – to defend the run, and when that happens, then you got a chance to get the ball up the field. And, and uh, in the rivalry game, there was a ton of drop eight, and uh, not much chance to go over the top. And so you just take what's there. And and uh, Zach had a big night. Uh, Tyler did a good job taking care of the ball. In fact, Tyler was really, really sharp. I mean, the two two of the incompletions. One was a tip ball on the boot. The de the defensive player got a hand on it and they tipped it, and and it uh, went awry. And then the other one was the drop. So he was. Uh, you know, he was really sharp, and and we we're pleased with where he, you know, where he was as far as a, a starting point. But again, we got to get better as far as being more productive, throwing the ball and getting more chunk yards. Is that the run pass distribution balance you expect to see and want to see going forward? No, that was pretty run heavy in in this last game. But again, it was because of the the structure of the defense. You know, ideally we want to be 50-50. I mean that's uh, that's an ideal offense. You you know the perfect offense offensive day would be no turnovers, 250 rushing, 250 throwing, and and uh, scoring in the red zone. But you know very seldom you're going to get exactly that. But that's that's the objective is to be very balanced, and so teams can't load up on one or the other. Kyle, from a technical standpoint, can you explain to us why Zach Moss is so difficult to bring down on first contact? Yeah, well, first of all, he's strong as a bull. I mean the kid is is built uh, incredibly. Uh, powerfully, you know, he's he's five ten and two hundred and twenty pounds, and 
and very good weight room strength. I mean, he's he's put together as well as any uh, back we've ever had come through here. Uh, he's got great balance. You know, he's hard to knock off his feet. He's he's uh, he's a guy that uh, you know has a low center of gravity and and uh, stays on his feet. Uh, he's got great vision. You know, he's he's able to you know just sense tacklers and potential tacklers and and uh, come at angles that that doesn't give them much of a shot to get a a good lick on him. So, like you say, it's a new NIU coaching staff, and Sutton Smith is not there anymore. Yeah, but thank goodness. Yeah. They had some other sacks last year as well. Is there anything to be learned from that tape? Well, yeah, that we got to be ready to play every week. Uh, you know, first and foremost, we weren't. Uh, and I want to give them credit because I'm not going to say we just slopped around, but they they had a good plan against us, and and uh, they had good players. Sutton Smith is the one that really jumps out. Uh, he was a tremendous player but uh you know we gotta it, it was just a testament that you gotta be on your game or or uh, you're gonna struggle and so we gotta be on our game now uh, against byu obviously jordan wilmore was kind of the one that got most of the touches beyond zach is that kind of where you're seeing it or does Devonte and and uh, uh devin kind of feed in there as well all four of those backs will figure in it was more jordan in the first game uh Devontae, is going to have his role and uh, Devin as well, and uh, but you know Jordan through fall camp had earned the opportunity to have the you know the second most carries and so uh, in that game he was the he was the he was the relief back and in, in places Zach uh, Devin does some really good things in short yardage and pass protection and and so each of them have their strengths but but uh, like I've been saying all fall camp we're very high on Jordan all high on all four of those backs but Jordan is really open some eyes uh, in the short time he's been here. Kyle, Zach moved up to number three on the all-time rushing list at Utah. He's closing in on Tony Lindsay and, and Eddie Johnson. Can you just talk about, he seems like a fitting guy to maybe be the all-time leading rusher in this program. Yeah, he's been uh, doing good things for us since his freshman year. Uh, he's been very steady, very consistent. And uh, you know, like you said, it should be just a matter of time barring Anything unforeseen where he takes over the number one spot, and that's a that's a, a really uh, good accomplishment when you look at all the backs that we've had, we've had come through here and and the production they've had, and uh, so you know, and Zach coming back, one of the reasons that he came back was was just that you know we had a chance to to uh, do some things that no backs have done here before, and so uh, just off to a good start. It's a long season, a lot of football left, but so far so good. Uh, to clarify the kicking, did you say that Andrew will kick off and Jaden will do the field goals? Exactly. Yeah. And can you just kind of review how that whole competition evolved throughout August? Yeah, uh, it was a three-man competition initially, and then it got down to two. Um, and uh, partly because of performance, performance, it got down to two, and partly because of injury. You know, it was it was going to get down to two either way, and and uh, we had a guy go down with an injury, and then. Uh, Jaden Redding was actually about two, about halfway at the midway point of camp. He was actually ahead statistically uh, as far as percentage made, uh, trajectory, uh, get off time. You know, there's several things that go into the equation. But then he got injured and missed, I think it was about 10 days. And uh, Andrew, uh, during that time, really started to come on and, and kick well. And then when Jaden got back, he still wasn't 100%. And uh, really wasn't 100%, 100% until just days before the opener and so when Andrew struggled uh, gave Jaden the opportunity to go in and show what he could do and how he didn't really get tested made a couple PATs but but uh, based on the whole body of work through fall camp and our inability to make a couple kicks that we should have made in the game on Thursday night Jaden will now get his shot. Kyle do you have a, an update for us on, on BAM's status? And no I wish I did it's more of the same no, no change no change from what uh, we talked about we're still waiting to get some things cleared up and again it's not academics as far as what he did at the junior college he's done all his part as far as that goes it's just a matter of determining eligibility based on uh, his time in London. Do, so. you, do you anticipate there being a, a time frame of when you decide to maybe redshirt him or not is there a point of no return for you guys? Uh, with, with that? Well you got those four games so I guess you could say it goes all the way to the last four games but <coughs> But the, you know, we want to find out sooner rather than later, obviously. And I think our compliance feels that we should have in the next two or three weeks an answer. So we, we hope that's the case. 
Kyle, how satisfying was it considering all the adversity Francis Bernard went through to see him go back to BYU and get a pick six? Well, it was awesome to see him play well and, and, and uh, excel. And uh, he's a great kid. I love Francis Bernard. He's one of our, our best leaders. He's been a, a model citizen since he's been here. Um, all he does is work hard and uh, do what he's supposed to do. And so it's really gratifying when you see guys that are getting a you know, I guess you can say a second chance or another opportunity to take advantage of it and uh, make the most of it. And he is certainly doing that at this point. You know, knock on wood, hope everything stays in, you know, on track. Coach, how did the uh, secondary grade out with Julian's first real game at safety and Tariq and, uh, and Jalen John seemed like they, uh, they, they did their job? They did. And uh, Tariq especially uh, performed well. And that was, you know, it's a concern whenever you have a corner the caliber of Jalen Johnson, you know they're going to pick on the other side whenever they can, and Tariq held up very well. Uh, Julian was good in the post uh, at free safety, uh, got a little aggressive at times, maybe played a little bit too shallow, but uh, he had a nice pick six off the deflected ball by Tariq, who played that just right. In fact, Tariq should have had the interception. It uh, went right off his hands. But Julian tackled well, uh, ran all the, the coverage and, and – uh, adjustments back there, the checks and the, and the adjustments, and and uh, I thought those guys did a good job, you know. And, and you know, credit, to, uh, you know, they were getting the ball out quick. You know, the pass rush wasn't really a big factor on uh, Thursday night because the ball was coming out quick, and so it was really just a matter of the secondary doing their job. Based on how well you ran the ball in the second half, is the offensive line pretty settled? Is that still a work in progress over the next couple of weeks? Uh, I know I'd say it's pretty settled. We're just waiting for. Uh, like we talked about before the game, two or three more guys do we emerge and, and round out that, that two deep. You know, the two deep still isn't quite a, a solid two deep. It's about seven or eight guys, and we want to have ten guys that we, you know, ideally that, uh, that uh, you know, if somebody goes down, you get guys at each position to back up. Now, it's usually not the case. Usually you have one tackle who's your next best guy who will go in at either right or left, and same with the inside three, a guy that can, you know, spell a center or either guard. So. So that's uh, there's always going to be a pecking order there. It's never going to be exactly, you know, just a two deep in the front. But if we can get to if we can get to ten, we'd be elated. And we're like I said, closing in on seven or eight right now. What did you learn watching the first weekend of Pac-12 football? Oh, what did I learn? Well, Oregon. Uh, I thought they were going to pull that one out. I mean, Oregon uh, stood toe to toe with Auburn, uh, you know, a top twenty SEC team, and at their place and slugged it out and. And uh, it was, you know, they, they should have won, really. I mean, they, they should have won the football game. And, and uh, it wasn't Auburn, right? It wasn't a neutral site. It was at Auburn. Is that right? Yeah, Dallas. Dallas. That's right. Dallas. Okay. What was the – I was thinking wrong. Yeah, Dallas. Okay. Anyway, it was, uh, it was uh, a good showing by Oregon. I thought they played well, even though they didn't come out on the right end of it. Um, I'm trying to think here. SC took care of business, although losing the quarterback is – was not ideal for him. Uh, I guess the only real, you know, Arizona was surprising. You know, that, uh, what happened in, in Hawaii. You know, Hawaii is well coached and, and a lot of offensive firepower. But um, then I don't think there was there any other major upsets. I don't think there was. Cal won. Oregon State had a tough one against Oklahoma State. Stanford beat uh, Northwestern. That was a good win for Stanford. Uh, yeah, USC beat Fresno. Watched that one the other night. Yeah, so I don't know if we know a whole lot more, David, than what we, you know, than what we knew prior to the season. I think it's going to take two or three or four weeks before you start to get a feel for where we're at Kyle, as a league. Sorry, a, a two-parter. How did you guys come across Jaden Redding in the recruiting process, and what was that like? And secondly, I saw him wearing Matt's number ninety-seven. Is that going to be a new program thing? You know, some programs design certain numbers for for positions due to prestige is that is that something that's going to happen due to Matt's ability uh, you know that's here? a good question I never pay attention to uniforms or numbers or any of that stuff and so that's just all up to the player what they you know we let them choose their number as long as it's available obviously I mean you, you know you can have a few duplicates but if you get too many duplicate numbers and you get issues on special teams because that's illegal to have two guys out there with the same number but but uh, how he how he arrived here he just he reached out to us you know he's from back on the east coast and uh, was a good high school kicker uh, looking for a place to play, and uh, reached out, and we uh, eva uh, evaluated his tape. Looked, he was doing some good things, so we invited him out here, and 
and uh, he's uh, proven to have a strong leg. He's got good mechanics. I mean, he's a, he's a solid kicker. He just needs some more experience, just a freshman. Going back to the kicking, how hard is it to have you know a right-footed kicker and a left-footed kicker, especially with the snaps? Does that, I mean, does that really cause some of those problems that maybe that's why, maybe Straw wasn't able to get that with the snaps, or what's that like? Yeah, it is. It is fairly significant, and not for the snapper, but for the holder. The holder is the guy that has to, you know, flip himself back and forth and almost makes him dyslexic, you know, doing that. I mean, it's like, because it's completely opposite. You're holding with the, the different hand and spinning the ball with the other hand. And so what we did during fall camp, uh, after a point, we just said we had a, a right-footed right footed holder and a left-footed holder that just worked exclusively with each guy. And so that seemed to solve the problem in that way. Uh, a guy could just settle in instead of having to flip back and forth uh, both guys each day. So we, we did it that way. And uh, now that we're back to a right a uh, footed kicker, it should be, because that's what most holders are brought up on is right footed kickers. That's the norm. You know, a left footer is the anomaly. And so hopefully that uh, settles in. But there's no excuse. I mean, we, you know, I thought the, that Ben Lennon was doing a nice job holding for the for the left footed kick. You know, he would, he was uh, really worked hard and dialed himself in and got, got to the point where he was really good at that. Sometimes it's tough coming off an emotional rivalry game against, uh, um, you know, the Mac's not a lesser opponent. But what they, how tough they played you last year, I assume that has the team's attention. Absolutely. And yeah. also, what are the, some of the strengths that uh, Northern Illinois has? Well, it's tough to say off of one game, but they got a good running back, rushed for right around 100 yards. They got some speed at wide out. Uh, got a kid go over 100 yards at wide receiver. Uh, very sound on defense, a lot of even front, quarters coverage, zone pressures, so nothing uh, that we haven't seen there, but just good, uh, solid, uh, uh, sound fundamentally and technique-wise on defense. Uh, punter's got a strong leg, averaged about 45 yards a kick on, uh, gosh, they punted eight or nine times. There's a lot of punting in that game. I think there were 17 punts overall between the two teams. Um, and so... Yeah, they've got, the main thing that's got our attention is is that last year we escaped by the skin of our teeth with a win. And I think it was a Chase Hansen picks, it was a pick six or an interception that set up a touchdown. That it was a pick six, yeah. So anyway, we were fortunate to win that game. No questions, Justin? Okay, we're set. We're set. Okay. All right, buddy. <coughs>